Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we have a 2014 uh, Range Rover supercharged 3 liter. And the concern is an intermittent crank no start. I'll go ahead and reproduce that symptom, but for now, I'll go ahead and give you guys a quick peek. There's a covering over the top. This uh, vehicle suffered severe water damage. But before I show you the culprit, this, this has already been diagnosed, by the way. Let me go ahead and show you exactly what it does. I got my key on. And... Hold on, sometimes it wants to crank, sometimes it won't. Any second now. <laughs> it's funny because when I pick up the camera, that's when it doesn't want to crank. Interesting. Are you serious? Now when I pick up the camera. You gotta be kidding me. Well, I can't get it to start now. Um, and I think I know why. I'll, I'll explain it later. But <clears throat> for now, it would start and maybe rev up a little bit and it wouldn't stay running. And I would do my pre I You know, I started with a pre-scan, of course. And I'm going to show you guys that. Here's the pre-scan, and we have a bunch of uh, high-speed CAN bus communication faults, a crash input fault, quiescent relay box, another set of high-speed CAN bus faults, intermittent, um, running board issue, that's, that's not our, our concern here, lost communication, Lost communication with the mo a restraint module, crash input, right? So, what I did was take a look at the CAN bus, the powertrain CAN bus, um, before and after it was starting. And I was getting a nice clean waveform. You guys can see here, this was when it didn't want to start. It is pretty acceptable so needless to say the waveform was no different before and after uh, it would start or not so that rules out a grounded bus or some a somehow destroyed bus you know causing lack of communication be between a lot of modules and what stood out to me was the crash input code that I got there and you know I never was told that this thing was in a collision I was only told that it had water damage but that's it and I wish I would have saved it but I don't have it saved I will show you what I did save uh, the live data didn't show uh, if you go to the restraint control module when it would communicate because it was an intermittent lack of communication with the restraint module went into the restraint module and I could see uh, live data and it would say crash event no so that was a little weird. I had a code for a crash input, but I had no crash event saved in the module. And then the next thing I saw was uh, these codes that I'm going to put on the screen now. And that really piqued my interest. And then I actually got it. Let me sh show you another picture, actually, before I get to that. The live data. You go to private communication bus A status communication not okay, even though it was that was live data. So uh, that's one of the things that I found. I'm going to show you what I did since I had already ruled out communication issue um, during one of my pre scans when it was acting up. It skipped right over the restraint control module, and uh, kind of like I didn't read service info and it, and it told me plainly that. You know, if it lacks communication with the strict restraint control module, it will, as a strategy, as a safety strategy, prevent further operation of the vehicle. That's what happened. And um, got authorized, uh, 
the book time to remove the center console and take a look at the, at the module and you can see the condition in which I found it here. Um, everything else looks pretty decent shape. The connectors look good. And I open that sucker up and this is what I find. The color of money. <laughs> because that's what it's going to take to fix this thing. We've got several issues here. Let's see if I can zoom in for you guys. See all that build up? Calcium, whatever you want to call it. We have some some capacitors here that are in really bad shape as well. Needless to say, this this restraint control module is in really bad shape. But I wish I could, you know, recreate the symptom. But now that I have the airbag module disconnected, you know what? Let me connect it. Let me see this all the way through. Why make a video if I can't show you exactly what happened? Um, now that you know what happened, I'll go ahead and prove to you that it is the case that when that module decides to communicate, it um, it will start and run. But when it doesn't communicate, it will not run. So just just putting it out there, just so you guys know. There is a strategy here in place, uh, at play here, in which if you have no communication with the safety control module, you are not going anywhere with that car. It's, um, it's probably for the best. And um, let, let's go ahead and put that for you guys. All right, so I've reinstalled, put back together that module and uh, bolted it down first before connecting those connectors uh, those of you who saw that Hyundai video where I was dealing with the variant coding, uh, <laughs> I failed to mention in the video, bolt it down first. Uh, I was careful not to move anything, but those of you who saw Scanner Danner's video, uh, he showed one time that he didn't bolt it down and the movement alone of that module while uh, connected and grounded was enough to set off several airbags. Literally, literally scared the crap out of them. But nonetheless, um, let's go ahead and turn on the key. And I wanted to kill two birds with one stone. I wanted to put the CAN bus live here. And let me just, uh, so you guys can see this. You guys will be able to see that the CAN bus does not have an effect. Oh yeah, and everything's taken apart right now because of the water damage. But the canvas will not have an effect before and after cranking or not cranking or starting or not starting. So let's go to the restraints control module. We turn on the key. If we can read codes, more than likely this thing is going to start. I believe this thing will, is going to start right now and idle. There it is right there. Now I have to just get this thing to act up. So I'm gonna turn on the key one more time and attempt to read and hopefully we can catch, catch this thing in the act. It's gonna start, we'll try it again. It doesn't stall. Let's try it again. What I could do is disconnect that module and prove it. But while we're here, just so you guys can see the live data that I failed to uh, document before, now I will document it and show it to the client. Crash status. Crash has occurred? No. See that? Let me take a snapshot of this. Um, basically saying no fault, no fault. Communication not okay, even though I'm communicating with this thing. It doesn't like something. But anywho. This thing may not act up on us. I turned it off there. How am I going to prove that there is a strategy? All right, it's reading now again. You guys can see that on the computer. I'm sorry, on the screen. I'm going to do something in which I do not recommend anybody else to do at home. <laughs> I've already done this before on this particular car, and I know nothing's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is turn off my key and disconnect it. 
we're gonna disconnect both connections here like I said do not try this at home all right we are disconnected key on And we got some rapid beeping, which didn't happen before, but let's go ahead and try to read codes. I forgot that I'm recording this. You guys can see that the CAN bus looks pretty intact. And I have no communication with it. I could do an auto scan and prove that everything else is reading that's on the same bus. And it skips right through the restraints control module. Let's pause that and let's try to start it up. And you guys could take a look at the tack and now it doesn't want to crank what the hell before it did that's funny so got my foot on the brake hit the button and it will not crank which is funny the first time I tried that it was disconnected but now I know for a fact that totally disconnected it will not crank at all that is the safety but even if it is connected and that module starts wigging out on you uh, it will crank and stall on you but unfortunately I have not been able to reproduce that symptom so I'm gonna pause the video reconnect everything and see if I could get this thing to act up all right so it is now the next day <laughs> plenty of time to give this thing a uh, a chance to act up um, first thing in the morning got my key on I've got the module connected here I'm hoping you guys can see this it's pretty dark right now so I don't really have a light put up against it um, I already attempted to communicate and it showed no communication with the restraint control module even though everything's connected and the key is on I'm convinced that it will crank and stall so let's go ahead and put the rpms on pressing the brake right now let's go ahead and start it up <laughs> and it just doesn't want to give me one second um this is like a hit or miss sometimes there it goes ah oh my goodness i bet it has communication And it does. Incredible. I can't get this thing to act up on camera. Even though it's done it plenty of times to me. It did a no crank though. But man, that's driving me nuts. I may not be able to get this on camera now. <laughs> it's gonna make me I make a liar out of me as Keith. The Fazio would say. Unfortunately, I don't think the customer is going to go very far with this. And with the weights, what sucks is that we may, we may return the, the vehicle to the customer. And it'll, it won't act up. <laughs> so they'll be like, okay, what did you do? That's why documentation is everything. This sucks. I think I will leave the video at that because I'm pretty, con I'm pretty sure that... Um, we're not going to go any further with this. Um, I really wanted to share the process, you know, taking a look at the CAN bus, as you guys can see, um, you know, in the footage, when it didn't crank and it had no communication with the restraint control module with the key on, that CAN bus was fine. And I just really wanted to show the process for the, uh, the Diag, you know, um, ruling out a bus issue. Um, which was, you know, my my knee-jerk reaction was CAN bus issue, right? And then, um, you know, connecting the dots with the crash code and, and, the, and the live data and all that stuff. That's what I really wanted to put out there, you know, for, for those of you who didn't know, this has a strategy, it will not communicate. If, it, if the restraint control module will not communicate, it will not crank. Many, many, maybe may, many other cars uh, have the same strategy, but uh, I have... I haven't really tried because I haven't gone around disconnecting restraint control modules and, and attempting that. I still haven't found any service info to 
explicitly uh, show that this is the case also as well so uh, and another thing to consider is you know it's a two hour job to do this center console alone just to remove the the airbag module so they want us to put it back together you know just thinking about the diag what if we're wrong right you know it's crazy what if the restraint control module was not the culprit but i believe we have enough evidence here to prove that it is that the restraint control module being non-communicative will give the car a strategy of a of like crash input or whatnot cause it not to uh not to crank not to start to prevent you know it's kind of like the inertia switch on a ford f-150s on, on many fords actually it's kind of like that is to prevent any operation of the engine or really fuel pressure is to prevent the fuel pump actuation uh, but this they, they go a bit further and they just want you to not touch the car if something's going on uh, with either maybe a crash event or um, or lack of communication with the restraint control model. I know certain a lot of hybrids GMs especially they if if it sees a crash event it will cut off um, the contactors it, it'll open the contactors um, to the high voltage battery but Anywho, every every car is a different strategy. You never know what you're gonna get, and um, I just yeah, I just wanted to share that. That's uh, hope. Hope it was helpful. Uh, unfortunately, I can't reproduce the concern. Um, we could reproduce the no crank, but not the start stall. I'll give it another shot just to see. And it's just not gonna act up. So forget it. <laughs> Incredible. A uh, bit of a letdown. Um, thank you for tuning in. And uh, be, her, uh, be sure to hit like, share, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time. Wow, so <laughs> right after I disconnected everything, it hacked it up. So super quick. Um, there is the module connected. It, um... Let's see, the key is on right now. And we're going to try to communicate with the restraint control module. No communication, so I'm going to hold the brake. And not touching anything. Don't tell me it doesn't want to act up now. My goodness, it just did it too. Every time I pick up the camera, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm not trying anymore. That's it. It just did it right now. My coworker was here. I have witnesses. <laughs> I'm done. Incredible. Next time I know, I'm going to pick up the camera from the get-go because this one I picked it up way too late. So, do apologize.